All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Peers video, Fat Phil. And this is officially part seven of the Relic Farming Guide. I initially thought I'd only do six, changing it to seven, and I'm not editing the other videos because, well, it's too late for that now. So we're going to get into this video. Hopefully you enjoy this kind of summary, a few final thoughts into the Relic Farming Guide, and just kind of wrap, you know, bringing it to a close. I've enjoyed making this series, even though it's currently... 1 22 a.m. in the morning here so i really appreciate all of you guys thank you so much especially my channel members you all are fantastic every single one of you is a gentleman lady scholar alike we've got to support our king right wampa is king we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers if we hit 10,000, wampa hits relic nine on a special live stream so make sure you guys don't miss that thank you again i really i cannot appreciate all of you Anytime I see kind words, anything like that, like it, it means the world to me. You know, it really does. So let's get into our little relic farming guide here. Kind of wrap things up, summarize some stuff for you. So the first grouping here, we've got the death by numbers. Remember, these are your pieces that they try and kill you with just how many you need. One thing I wanted to mention in part one, and then it kind of dawned on me later, is that you notice that a lot of the players at the end game, like your Arnolds, your Zareths, you know, some of the, like Heinze, like those guys at the end game, they're always out of bronzium wiring. And they're always out of carbonite circuit boards. And I was watching Arnold the other day when he was hoarding energy before getting Leia, and I recognized that the reason he doesn't have these carbonite circuit boards is, as I told you guys with both of these, that you're farming nodes that a lot of the ways you're getting these pieces is by farming nodes. And it dawned on me that Arnold isn't farming nodes anymore. That when he gets a new character, he's buying the marquee packs and then taking them to seven star. Whereas all the rest of us were farming those nodes to get those characters seven star along the way. Where he hasn't really been doing that, he saves his energy. And I mean, he's allowed to do that, right? I'm not trying to like knock the guy, like he's fantastic. I love Arnold. I think he's a great, you know, asset to the community. But he runs out of these materials because the rest of us are farming these things every single day because we're gearing up all these other characters where the way he's doing it, he's not really having a chance to you know, build up any kind of stockpile of these things because he's hoarding energy at all times. So that was something that popped in my head I did want to mention. Something else just to think about with all of these pieces, right? You remember I mentioned with a bunch of them that it's about using your Mark II raid currency when you can. Remember, I gave you a lot of ways to use your Mark II raid currency. I would just try and split it the way you see fit. I would not go too crazy with it in any stretch of the imagination, right? Like I would not go and just only use Mark II raid currency to um, for Relic Salvage. I think you'll run out. But I think that you could be relatively safe and say that maybe, you know, every couple raids, you're going to buy some of this, you're going to buy some of that, that you want to just kind of slowly progress remember as i tried to build in every single video and hopefully you saw it was that they all build on top of each other that your strategy for how you build these pieces leads you into being able to save things for these pieces here and then these pieces here that instead of trying to utilize only crystal approach or only this approach or that approach for every single relic piece you're trying to take the entire game take everything they give you and earn your relics that way so that's something really important that I wanted to mention and make sure that that got out there for everybody. Another thing to keep in mind here, just as I was on this page, just look at the signal data, how much it jumps up beyond Relic 7, right? Look how much more you need to start spending when you get into the Relic 8 and Relic 9 here. But also just look at like your impulse detector, your Zimbital cards. Look at these pieces. Look, you, you need so many of these pieces once you get into those rate, later Relic levels. And this is where I think players don't fully understand just how much that is. That for the cost of a single Relic 9, I could take five characters to Relic 7 in terms of the Zimbodo cards I'm using. Obviously, the rest of the Relic materials were not quite there yet. But just in the Zimbodo cards alone, think of that, right? That a Relic 9 character has the equivalent of five Relic 7 characters worth of Zimbodo cards. So... It is very expensive, and I don't think we always give it this the, the respect that it deserves. Um, the last thing I do want to leave you guys with, right, is these sources. I, I don't really touch a lot about assault battles, and the reason I don't touch on assault battles all that often here is that the assault battles to me are bonus. 
they should not be relied upon. These are not pe this is not something that you rely on and say, okay, this is the way I'm going to get these pieces is through assault battles. They're a bonus. They're fun. They're great, but you don't really, you can't really say that you rely on it for that piece because it just you, you'd run out, right? Um, again, your guild events and currencies you can earn these pieces for. Remember, scrapping salvages, yeah, any piece in the game you can make that into it, and it's fine. Um, I do want to hop over into the game real quick and just kind of leave you with some final thoughts here about just relics in general. So one of the things that I get asked a lot is why don't I have any Relic 8 Galactic Legends? And as I told you guys, it's because I put it on Wampa. No, just kidding. That was for 5,000 subscribers. Um, it's really just because I've always viewed them as something I use for requirements. Now I'm fast approaching that point where that's no longer going to be a thing and I'm going to start Relic 8 characters. But the way that I would relegate my Galactic Legends is I would go with my my GL, I'd go with my Defensive Galactic Legends first. So one of the big things that I feel players do is they get a character like Kylo and they relegate him right away because it looks awesome. But he's an offensive Galactic Legend. A lot of times you're going to win with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren on offense simply through strategy. That a lot of times strategy wins out on offense but defensively if you can put more relic levels on those teams and make it harder for your opponent's strategy to work i notice it's far more successful so my advice for you as players going in is that if you're thinking of putting relic eights on your galactic legends think of which ones you're using on defense first and that is going to help you so much more rather than trying to you know, I know a lot of us love the Relic 8 JML. I get it. It's one that I'm definitely considering. But, like, I'd probably throw mine on Lord Vader first because I use them on defense. And I think that it would give me a little bit of a bigger boost. So, I'm going to leave you guys with that final thought there. I, I don't know if you guys can tell that I can, like, barely keep my eyes open right now. But I really appreciate all of you. I hope you've enjoyed this seven-part series. You know, extra bonus part at the end here, kind of. On Relic Farming, the way I do it, the way I see it. So, you guys let me know your thoughts down below. Like, subscribe, comment. I love all you. May the force be with you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.